Hello and welcome to the Orient. I'm Eric Cheung. In recent years, Hong Kong's craft beer scene has become more vibrant and more people have shown an interest in drinking locally brewed beer. In this episode, we visit two of the biggest local beer companies that pride themselves on brewing in Hong Kong. Hong Kong's craft beer industry has been expanding dramatically over the past few years. One of the most famous brands, Guaylo Beer, is opening the city's largest brewery this summer. Ian Javits, one of the co-founders, offers the Orient an exclusive tour into the 14,000 square feet facility in Fotan. So we, lo we launched uh, Guaylo back in 2015 and we got up to capacity with our existing uh, brew space pretty quickly. So we needed this new space to expand our production both in Hong Kong and also to meet the demand across Asia. The Hong Kong Craft Beer Association, which represents local brewers and bar owners, also noticed a growing thirst for craft beer among the local population. It says there were over 20 local breweries last year, and the majority of them were founded after 2013. Jebet says he used to brew guaylo in his spare bedroom, but rising demand means he is now able to build his own brewery. He says the expansion will also allow the company to introduce world-class equipment to improve beer quality and produce seasonal flavors. So here at Guaylo, we've invested in four 1,000-liter uni tanks. This will enable us to produce small batch beers, limited edition beers. We want to make beers that excite people. We're going to use local ingredients. We're going to use different methods, different techniques, uh, different fermentations. And these tanks will enable us to just, just have some fun. Young Master Beer, another leading brand in Hong Kong, has also opened a new brewery in Wong Chok Hang in 2016. The brewery features unique equipment that allows the company to produce beers that are distinctive to Hong Kong. So this uh, oak barrel is uh, 4,000 liters. This is actually the first of its kind uh, in, in, in Asia. Uh, many uh, traditional sour beer brewery in, let's say, Belgium has been using this for long, long time. We want to diversify ourselves. We want to uh, broaden our beer uh, portfolio and beer selection. Ashley Tam, the company's marketing executive, says Yangmaster has also been expanding and is now shipping to some Southeast Asian countries. She believes that craft beer is more appealing than commercial beer because it explores different flavors and provides more choices to customers. We've been making something new, like experimental beer. Uh, for example, like uh, Cha Chan Tan Goza, which is like a very traditional German style. We also add salt lime here, like local made salt lime. Um, so the local people are kind of familiar with the taste of the beer, then they're more willing to try this kind of new beer. As for Jabbit, he is hopeful that opening the new brewery will popularize craft beer among the population and expand the industry. What we're really hoping with this facility is we're hoping to raise the bar of craft beer in Hong Kong and be, be a pioneer that really pushes forward craft beer production in Hong Kong. And that's our aim, to really plant a flag for Hong Kong as being a beer producing country and really make pioneering beer styles of the best quality that can be shipped across the world. So joining us right now is Ian and Rohit. Thank you very much for joining us. So I guess the first question is for you, Ian. Um, you know, your, your, your brewery has just expanded and, you're, and you want to reach to the Asian market. So what is really unique about Guaylo beer and what's the appeal of you know, craft beer in general? I think the appeal for craft beer in general is, is that it's normally less locally produced there's traceability of the, pro of the product, it's also better quality ingredients are used uh, and it's brewed with love and passion. So it, it's normally unpasteurized, unfiltered, so it's much, it's mu it tastes a lot different to a macro beer. So craft beer can sometimes be a bit stuffy, you can get sort of 9-10% different beers made with all wacky and wonderful different stuff and it's sort of normally drunk in a wine glass. Our core range is very much the opposite of that, it's everyday beer, accessible beer, but we have with the new brewery, the ability to make, and we will be making some really fun, geeky stuff as well. So, Rohit, I understand that you know when you go to like the market, um, 
craft beer is usually sold at a more expensive price than other international brands. So how do you usually convince other people to buy your product? Look, the first thing is you don't convince everybody. Uh, I mean, craft is, uh, is uh, you know, essentially for someone who values a product um, that, you know, brewers like us uh, put out. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's more ingredients, higher quality ingredients per unit beer. Um, so we tend to work with venues, work with channels, retail channels that actually want to differentiate themselves from uh, mass produced industrial products. And, uh, you know, so essentially it's, it's ultimately about the product itself. Why do you decide to set up a brewery in Hong Kong and what's the advantage of producing beer in Hong Kong? Sure, I, I think it was just, you know, a combination of circumstances. I moved to Hong Kong not, uh, not with the intention of starting a brewery, I moved for my job back then. You regret then. it now as well, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, and, and uh, you know, when I first moved in, I moved in, moved here from the States, from New York, and I was uh, shocked to see that there's no local brewery, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of doing interesting things. Um, whereas, you know, in many parts of the world, it had already become like a, you know, it's almost expected that there's at least a few interesting breweries pretty much everywhere. Um, so back then, you know, I felt like the only way to drink decent beer was to homebrew, and I was homebrewing quite a bit. Um, and eventually, you know, that got me thinking, why don't I, you know, do something with this? So for Ian, like, what's the advantage of producing craft beer in Hong Kong in particular? I don't know that there's an advantage in Hong Kong over any other, any other country. I think my story is very similar to Rohit's. I, I arrived in Hong Kong as a, as a trademark attorney uh, and but being actively home brewing as, as a kid and there was no local craft beer here at the time. And I saw Rohit start Young Master and we, we kind of started in a different way. We started contract brewing our recipes we used to brew back in, back in the UK. My wife and I started contract brewing those locally. We've now built our own facility. But so again, we're here just because of the fact we're already here in Hong Kong. So I don't think there are any advantages other than for the local market, it's brewed locally. Right. So my final question to the both of you is that what do you expect the Hong Kong craft beer industry to be in like in about like five years? What's the future of it? So uh, I think I can talk more in the sense of what I hope it is. Yes. You know, I, I hope that, you know, uh, as I said earlier, that, you know, beer produced in Hong Kong is of world, world class standards. Uh, what I'd also like to see is that there's uh, specialization and more, uh, you know, smaller breweries, you know, focusing on something and really doing it real extremely well and, uh, and, you know, honing their craft and focusing on quality and trying to differentiate themselves against, you know, everything else that's made. Right, so Ian? I'm very much similar to Rohit. I think uh, <coughs> I would be perhaps slightly less diplomatic and say that I think in the next five years there'll be somewhat of a reckoning. Right. There are, I think there are a lot of breweries that have started up in the last sort of three years that aren't particularly making the best beer in the world. They're making okay beer, but as Rohit said, the standard isn't world class. We need to kind of make sure that there's enough high quality variety in the market for people. So Rohit makes a beer, uh, the Cha Cha Tang Goze, which is really popular beer. It's, it's a very unique taste. So it's kind of we need more beers like that that push the boundaries and that sort of aren't your typical beer right. uh, or perceived to be the typical beer and kind of, uh, yeah, I guess you like Rohit said, just ra raise the standard generally and uh, hope, hope, hope that craft beer becomes more widely available to the, to the public. Right, so thank you Ian and Rohit for joining us. We really appreciate it. So thank you for watching. I'm Eric Chung. See you next time. Goodbye.